Kidnapping is a crime, unless you have that person's permission. Thanks for tying me up. May I have a soda? Mmm, that wasn't soda. Lately, I've been so busy with work, I've missed hanging out with my friends. This week, I'm going to try kidnapping my best friend three times so we can spend more quality time together. Hope it's fun. My best friend Ben and I have known each other for two and a half years. To put that in perspective, Romeo and Juliet only knew each other for less than four days, so we're closer than those two ever were. Ben and I used to hang out at least three times a week. We would grab dinner, see movies, and watch hockey games together. We had what some people call a bromance. As time passed, we slowly drifted apart. Life became busy, free time became scarce, laughter became a memory. It's made me deeply sad, but I'm too proud to tell Ben I miss him. So I'm going to do the very next best thing, kidnap him three times. Using my intricate knowledge of Ben's interests and routines, I devised several plans to trap him. Before I could officially capture Ben, my company's legal team required Ben's written consent to participate in this video. The legal team ruins all my fun. Next, I needed Ben to sign my waiver so I could let the kidnappings begin. I wrote Ben a message claiming I needed his help on an upcoming episode of Outsmarted. Little did he know, I was lying. I didn't need help, I needed a target. I asked three of my strongest co-workers to wear barbershop quartet uniforms with ski masks and hide behind a wall. On my signal, they would sneak up behind Ben, throw a blanket over him, and kidnap him. That's Ben's chair, that is the flat. Who were these co-workers willing to help kidnap my best friend? My first accomplice was Kwesi, who I'm proud to say is one of my closest work friends. How well do you know me? Shit, I don't even know your last name, dude. What is it? It's not Riley, no. How are they allowing you to do this? My second accomplice was a murderer I met on Craigslist. Just kidding. My second accomplice was my coworker, Zach, who I've never had lunch with alone. You know, I don't want to hurt him, but if he hits me and multiple times and hurts me, I might have to throw him to the ground to calm him down. And my final accomplice was a valet attendant who I've only spoken to once about professional wrestling. Do you want to take your mask off and reveal your identity so people know who you are? Rather not. The three of these powerhouses shaped like men were waiting on my command to do my evil bidding. What time is it? Time to kidnap my BFF. I asked you here because I need your help escaping a CIA spy. How can I help you? You're a very confident man. You seem very comfortable in your own personal security. I would say that's fairly accurate. That is why I guarantee I can kidnap you three times in a week. Wow. You think you can kidnap me three times in a week? I guarantee I can kidnap you three times in a week. Bring it on. Let me first define the term kidnapping. Right. Taking someone against their will into a different room. So I don't have to bring you to my basement and torture you and spank you and tickle you. Now, all I know is this means I'm going to be hyper vigilant. Like... <laughs> you haven't agreed to it. Okay. <laughs> I can run the rules by you. Please. You cannot at any point yell for help. If you yell for help, that qualifies as an immediate kidnapping. Okay. You cannot fight anyone trying to kidnap you. You can try and wiggle your way out. You can try and run away. One more rule is that you cannot work from home every single day. If I am successful at kidnapping you three times in a week, I can shave one of your eyebrows. Come on, Mike. All the way off? Bye bye brow. <laughs> if I lose, <laughs> you can shave off one of my eyebrows. I like to run things by my girlfriend as a sounding board. Call her in front of us. Hi, Benny Hanna. Hi, love. Mike Carrier just bet me that he will be able to kidnap me three times in one week. And, really? And if he succeeds, then he is allowed to shave off one of my eyebrows. What do you I, think of this, Annie? I mean, I obviously do not approve. You don't? No. But what do you think about my likelihood of succeeding here? I mean, you know me, I'm paranoid. I could be hyper alert all the time. I'm not gonna right? go, like, I think I can win this challenge. I would rather get a tattoo of your choosing than do this almost. A tattoo would last forever. Do eyebrows like grow back normally? I'm comfortable making it a tattoo if I win. I love you <laughs> and I'm gonna do the tattoo angle. The good news is that Ben raised the stakes. Shaving his eyebrow would have embarrassed him for about a month. 
but getting an ugly tattoo would embarrass him for a lifetime. This was the first tattoo idea that crossed my mind. It starts right now. You with... have to read the contract okay. and agree to it. Can I read it outside of this dark lair that you've brought me to? Because there could be someone waiting right behind that door to just snatch me and move me. You can. Deal. I'll give you the contract. There you go. Feel free to read it. I know that as soon as I sign this, you have something prepared to kidnap me. I am going to sign this outside of this room. Uh, we don't have cameras outside. See, you, can, you can't just use this video to keep me confined to your little box of tricks, Mike. Okay. Uh, yeah, just... Why, don't you, why doesn't someone just pop off that camera and come join me while I sign this outside? If this is on, if there's a tattoo on the line and an eyebrow, I'm taking this very seriously. Sure. Kidnappers, you guys can stay hiding back here wherever you are. Yeah, there's a table. Great. Perfect. Good luck. Good luck to you, my friend. Ben shouldn't have tried to outsmart me. This means war, my friend. I just signed the contract. I'm on hyper vigilance mode right now. I've asked my coworkers to keep an extra eye out for me. Evan, you got my back? I got you, bro. Oh my God, we must have hit Ben off guards. We must. Ben rushed back to his desk, or as I call it, scurried away like a gutless Freddy cat. I asked my three barbershop boys to sneak up to Ben's desk and help me snatch him. A barbershop quartet with ski masks kidnapped you for the first one. Is this who I'm going to be up against the rest of the time? Time will tell, my friend. This is bullshit. At work, Ben and I are both expected to attend the same weekly meeting. I knew if I didn't show up, Ben would become extremely paranoid. So paranoid that he stands in the doorway to protect himself. Where am I? plotting my next strategy. Mike's the kind of guy who would put a tracker on my car to know my whereabouts at all times, so... I am looking to see if there's anything. For my next kidnapping strategy, I'm going to try exploiting Ben's greatest love, acting. Ben is a tremendous actor. Here's one of his earliest and most embarrassing headshots. I figured out a perfect way to use Ben's dream of being an actor to my advantage. Seven years ago, I wrote a script about young people working at a solar company. I added a monologue for a new character named Ben and gave this script to the scripted director Ben works with most often, a man named Henry. I usually am pretty mild-mannered in my ordinary life, so this was an opportunity for me to do something horrible uh, and blame it on Mike. Several days before the kidnapping challenge began, I had Henry email Ben this script and ask him to memorize the lines. I wanted to make sure that while Ben performed his lines, he looked like a complete idiot. Therefore, I wrote three strange emotional changes in the script to challenge his skills. It was actually like we pitched it as this really big project for him that could be big for his career. I texted Mike saying, oh, dude, I feel really bad about this. This seems wrong. Like, Ben is really excited. I, you know, this is going to end in tears. And Mike didn't seem to uh, be worried about that. Because I'm not the strongest man in the world right now, I needed help lifting Ben up to kidnap him. So in the script, I wrote Ben's character speaking with two shirtless men. To fill those shirtless roles, I hired weightlifters. I'm a personal trainer for 15 years now. I could bench press 415 and deadlift a little over 500 pounds. I always wanted to kidnap a celebrity. Let's see if Ben was foolish enough to memorize my fake script. Ash. Jeez Louise, just buy my solar panels. If there is anyone on this planet who can appreciate the sheer power of the sun, it is you two professional sunbathers. I mean, you are tearing my soul into pieces right now. Right after we're graced with Ben's performance, we'll kidnap him a second time. Sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy this bizarre monologue I forced my best friend to memorize. Honestly, I don't even know why I try to save the world anymore. I mean, doctor says my heart's too big, both literally and metaphorically. I mean, sad thing is she says 
I've given so much of myself over to charitable causes, I only have about 80 more years left to live. So I am going to spend those last few 80 years helping people. You can call me Mr. Energy. First name Solar, last name Energy, middle name, buy a panel from me or I will break your pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I just got distracted by how great your acting was. Oh, oh you mother f***er! Oh, no! Oh, God You piece of f***ing guys! You mother No! Did you write this scene for me to get kidnapped? I did. You oh. mother I'm a sunbather, baby! Oh. 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 No! Oh. Woo! Oh, that was awesome. Kidnapping number two was a piece of cake, and oh boy, was that cake yum city. That's number two, baby! There will not be a number three. Here's another wonderful tattoo idea I like. A week ago before this challenge began, I interviewed Ben's girlfriend Annie on camera. I told her I was planning Ben's surprise birthday party. She responded by saying I was a great friend. Here's what I did next. I'm not planning your boyfriend's surprise birthday party. I'm planning on kidnapping your boyfriend. Interesting. I love it. If you're interested. Oh my god. I can okay. use your help. Okay. How can I be of service to you? I would say that Katy Perry is his biggest celebrity crush. Yes. Here's the strategy I pitched to Annie. I want Annie to give me a copy of their apartment key. I will sneak in at 4 a.m., crawl up to their bed, and gently wake up Annie. She will quietly exit the bed. A KD Perry impersonator I hired will slide into bed and wake up Ben by whispering, Ben, it's me, Katy Perry. I love you and I want to be together. We will wait three seconds for Ben's response. Then the two weightlifters I hired earlier will grab Ben and drag him out of the room. This will be the third and final kidnapping. He's gonna like stab you. He's gonna kick your ass. Does he have a knife? Um. On the bed? Some nights. Annie delivered on her apartment key promise. Then I hired a Katy Perry impersonator who I assumed was a Katy Perry fan. I don't really like Katy Perry that much, but Katy Perry life has chosen me, so now I'm forced to just go with it. In order to manhandle Ben's 165 pound body, I hired the same two sunbathing weightlifters from earlier to come back at 3 a.m. I think Ben is gonna shriek a little bit. I went home for a little bit. I ended up eating a spicy tuna roll. As the clock neared 4 a.m., my team and I drove to Ben's apartment. We drove the speed limit because that's what all the cool kids do. I entered the front door using the code Ben's girlfriend gave me. Then my gang of weirdos and I snuck inside. Using the apartment key Annie gave me, I crept inside with my team. I calmly knelt down beside the bed to wake Annie and set our kidnapping plan in motion. Ben outsmarted me. I was furious. Annie double-crossed me. Sneaky, sneaky, Mr. Carrier. Lesson one, loyalty. And it says TikTok on my forehead. There's a note that says play me, and there's a YouTube link. So I've gotta watch this YouTube link. Mr. Carrier, right now I'm sound asleep in a hotel room while you're in my room with a couple creepy sex dolls. I don't know, how did this happen? I knew that you would wanna get into my apartment but I couldn't figure out how. You wouldn't have my keys, you're not allowed to do anything illegal. And then I realized the only way you could get to me would be through Annie. So I grilled her for hours and she finally broke. And now I got her working for me, right where she belongs. We're here at Staples right now. I'm printing out a little something for you, Mikey boy. Check out this man. Check <laughs> him out. Night, night, John. Night, night, John. Sweet dreams. Pulling into our new home for the night, the wonderful Hollywood Roosevelt. So game on, buddy. And get used to this sound. Not only was I pissed off, I wanna punch a hole in every wall here. I was in someone else's bedroom at 4.30 a.m. with total strangers who were also pissed off. If I see Ben walking down the street anytime in the next year or so, I'm gonna kidnap his myself. 
Wanted to get a good look at who was coming to kidnap me, so I asked our apartment manager to pull up the elevator footage from last night. There's Mike leading the way. And who is that woman? I slept for four hours before waking up angry. I decided sleep was overrated and walked back to work so I could plan the ultimate kidnapping strategy. Lately, Ben has been collaborating with a video producer named Kelly. I asked Kelly to help sabotage Ben and even offered her $100. Will you help me kidnap Ben a third time? I will help you but I don't feel good about it. Ben agreed to meet Kelly the next morning, so I got right to work. First, I asked my good friend Steven to help rig a GoPro in the meeting room as well as hide a microphone in a backpack. At midnight, I finally finished figuring out all the logistics of my new strategy. I emailed all my accomplices and I slept like a baby. I'm wearing this wig as a disguise so that Ben doesn't recognize me when I kidnap him the third and final time. I enlisted the help of four strong men to drag Ben's pale butt cheeks out of the meeting room. Here's my new strategy. Kelly will arrive early and wait patiently in the meeting room. When Ben enters and shuts the door behind him, Kelly will secretly call my phone. That phone call is the signal my team waits for downstairs before bursting in and kidnapping Ben the final time. Just waiting on the phone call. My gang and I received the signal from our accomplice on the inside, Kelly, and we moved in. Wait, that's not Ben. Who the f is that? Kelly backstabbed me too? God. I'm supposed to help my kidnap Ben tomorrow. I don't think I can do it. Soon after midnight, when I emailed Kelly my strategy for the day, she was overwhelmed with guilt. She confessed to Ben that I was trying to use her as a double agent. She too didn't want the $100 bribe. A lot of motherfuckers up in here must already be rich. $100 is a lot of money. So here's my plan. I'm going to enter the office wearing this outfit, black shirt, black hat. I'm gonna go into the meeting and say, Kelly, hold on one second, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm gonna head to the bathroom. Okay. When I get to the bathroom, Victor will already be there waiting. I'm gonna give him my shirt and my hat. I'm gonna change into something else. Victor will then go into the meeting pretending that he's me with his back to the door. Kelly will signal Mike that I'm in there. Mike will come in, net Victor. Kelly will then signal the air horn, which is my cue to leave the bathroom untouched. It worked. It worked. Holy Right after Ben escaped my elaborate trap, one of his accomplices handed me a video. I begrudgingly sat down and watched whatever bullshit Ben wanted me to see. Mike, didn't we just have this talk? I wasn't kidding when I said lesson number one is loyalty. That's something I share with all of my teammates, including Kelly, who you tried to turn against me. So now you're feeling that familiar sting of being double-crossed. Still wish you the best, my friend and good luck. Enraged by Ben's taunting video, I gathered my gaggle of muscular men and led them on another mission. I assumed Ben went to celebrate his brilliant escape plan with his girlfriend, Annie. My team and I set a course for Annie's desk. Brute force had worked once before. Why not try again? As we were walking towards Annie's desk, I noticed Ben enter the room about 10 feet in front of us. We saw Ben talking on his phone, boasting about his master escape plan. Mike. Do you really think I'm dumb enough to go into a room with only one exit? Come on, man, not this late in the game. I had my team split up. Justin went to the far side of the room. Brendan went to the center. Josh and I stayed behind Ben. We surrounded him and waited. A few seconds went by and then I heard it. Ben screamed. Go, go, go. Center! Get him! Go! In here, in here, in here. Come on, in here. Woo! I got you, Woo. cocky. You found me. We got him. Yeah. Just as I guaranteed, I kidnapped Ben three times in a week. Sure, it wasn't pretty, but neither is my face. What we've been doing here has just been pranking each other, and we've taken it very seriously. The actual act of kidnapping someone is a crime. Anyone who does it is a piece of shit and deserves to go to jail and rot in hell. There's an organization out there that's very important to me called the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and they dedicate their lives to finding missing kids. 
If you take two minutes, check it out, donate if you can, you could literally help save a life. Now back to this bull Hey. Hey, Ben. How's it going? Good, good. Are you ready? No, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna put a stencil on you. Okay. I'm not normally a religious person, but I'm praying right now. <laughs> Just hold really still right there. If you like it, please don't punch me in the face. When you say stuff like that, it gets me nervous. As I watched my best friend be punished for losing a challenge he never asked for, I reflected on the nature of friendship. Friendships have ups and downs. There are moments filled with laughter. There are moments filled with tears. There are days you want to hug them. There are days you want to spit on their face. Even after the hell I just dragged Ben through, he trusted me enough to get a tattoo on his arm forever. That trust meant a lot to me. The last few days, I've done lots of thinking. The only reason I did this video was so that Ben and I could spend more quality time together. If I got a disaster of a tattoo on his arm, he would hate me forever. He would push me out of his life and I would have to live in the sewers. So, I'm not going to get a crappy tattoo. Can I look? You can look. I'm going to get him a lovely tattoo. What is it, a DNA? That's a DNA helix. Loyal, you mother Dude, that, that is sick. That's a lesson you're trying to teach me twice earlier this week. I'm gonna make sure that you learn it for the rest of your life. I chose a tattoo that represents our week together and something very important to Ben, loyalty. Loyalty is also a reference to his favorite song, DNA by Kendrick Lamar. I got loyalty inside my DNA. And that's dope. This tattoo is a 10. You picked something for me that I would have picked for myself, which is the best gift a friend could give me. Thank we you. We can hang out more yes. often now. Dude, this is awesome. Yes. He's a good guy. At the end of the day, I'm thrilled my best friend forced me to take my skills to the next level. Hopefully he's more aware of his personal security vulnerabilities moving forward. Maybe next time, Ben can try kidnapping me. Are you scared of being kidnapped right now? No, I'm scared of you because you pull sh like this all the time. Remember when you came to my desk one time? You was like, hey man, I got a really cool idea. So we're gonna do this thing where you show your best friend each other's penis, and then you, you did the trick where you didn't take your pants off. 